Hello, this is Dawn Dyson. Today we are going to consider God in a Christian evaluation of current events. Proverbs 14.34 in the Amplified Classic Translation says, Uprightness and right standing with God, moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation, elevates a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. God is not a man that he should lie. The problem in today's world or in any historical or future phase of it is not God, it is man. Of all the things to study, the Bible should be foundational. It is the truth of life. God's report is authoritative over any news report. God's acts are authoritative over man's acts. Be in right standing with God, and what do you have to fear then? The answer is nothing. No one can take from you your joy, your peace, your eternity, nor your now. What are you afraid of? Whatever it is, don't be. That thing causing you stress has an element of falsehood in it. God is taking that off of your hands in this moment. To worry about it further is to give it far more status than it deserves. If it doesn't pay the retainer on your soul, pray, and then ignore it. Drop it, leave it, and let it go. Concentrate on God. That thing that keeps you up at night is laced with a lie. Peace lets you sleep. You won't remember evil down the road because God is showing you the truth with every forward step you take. Anxiety is a hoax, like mist, that disappears under the sun. You do not have to entertain it. Just ask God to part the veil of it and walk through. Take up the truth and put your energy in that. Heaven is right in front of you. Open your eyes and have outlandish hope. As far as the trouble, we know the harshest winters yield the most fruitful growing seasons after. So get some rest. Use the energy gained by peace to fight only the good fight. Love God, love people, and go about doing good. I rarely mention my degrees because we are all taught by God Himself, and from Him alone comes any qualification. But I have, by His grace, earned a Master of Divinity, and am prayerfully and Lord willing earning a Juris Master in International Law. On missions, I have visited socialist and post-communist countries that are crumbling, where the children are starving and begging in the streets and the people, including elderly and children, have no health care, electricity, or clean water. The global, local, and personal problem is that we have somehow tried to secularize and democratize by an increasingly sinful majority everything. We have, as a society, tried to steal God's laws from Him, twist them to suit sin, and mock those who wish to keep his religion. Religion is our moral obligation and duty paid back to God in thankfulness for his undeserved grace and goodness. And when we turn our back on this, it's dangerous ground for humanity at large. Thou shall not kill. So how is abortion legal? Thou shall not steal. Are we stealing from God himself? Thou shall not steal includes wisdom. God is smart, and God asks us to forgive. Has man in the name of Christianity made mistakes? Yes. Name me a people group who has never made a mistake. Name me a single person who has never made a mistake. I can only think of one. Jesus Christ. Mankind, including myself, can be a poor representative of His love and perfection. This is because Christ alone is Christ. 
Isn't it time that you come to know him intimately, if you have not? He is for your benefit and advantage in every way. Christians are not simple-minded. They are high-minded, yet choose peace, love, and belief like a child. And if they are true, they are compelled by the Lord, doing everything in their power to communicate his message of care and blessing. What if Christians are correct? What if the lost world never listened? The Word of God is a miraculous book written at a higher level than the most complex analytical maze that man can conjure. Yet God speaks to everyone who will read it in reverence. God solves all sin. I believe after studying many years that God's heart is to save mankind from sin while there is a chance to choose life. Consider these verses. I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. Therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live. The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I came, Jesus says, that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. For such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved and increasingly to perceive, recognize, and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. For there is only one God, and only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's Deuteronomy 30:19, John 10, 10, and 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 5 in the Amplified Classic Translation. Within the church, we have corruption creeping in. Within the state, we have corruption creeping in. The Bible and a beautiful relationship with Christ is the only way to keep the balance. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and because I love you, God says, I will give men in return for you and peoples in exchange for your life. That's John 14, 6 and Isaiah 43, 4 from the Amplified Classic Translation. Consider God in your evaluation of current events. As presumptuous as this is to say, if you were God wishing all men to be saved, what would you do to get the world's attention? If you were God and could see everything and peer into every spiritual realm, including the pit of hell, seeing souls pouring into it. What would you do to save the masses? Does this sound dramatic? Is crime in the streets dramatic? Is an epidemic contagion dramatic? Are the millions in human trafficking dramatic? Are children starving in third world countries and in America dramatic? You see, we all need God every person, every nation. The problems, big or small, are solved by Him, and with our cooperation to know and be responsible to the truth. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of peace, love, and a calm and sound mind. Consider 2 Timothy 1.7 in the Amplified Classic Translation. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. In all of the worry about church attendance, I have said, be the church. Start doing church like Jesus did it. Feed people, clothe people, willingly share, and stop stealing on one side of the spectrum or the other. Owe no man anything but to love him. Take this time to do church outside of the building or denomination and keep pressing in for our religious freedom of expression as well. In the meantime, know the church is Christ's 
and she will remain on earth until he comes for her. It is a false spirit that whispers we shouldn't preach these days, that at best we should entertain. However, in truth, we should all be entertaining Christ. It's not about us. It's about God and his souls. It's about the good fight of faith that the Lord fights for us. We rest and follow him. We keep our heads. We tell the truth. We continue until the Lord calls us home. And while we are here, we do something good on his behalf. The United States of America blemishes in all has given us the beautiful chance to get to know Jesus personally. It is historically unprecedented. We have been given the truth and the freedom to exercise it. So my question to you is, what are we doing with it?